The campaign train of presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, was a Maiduguru today for a mega rally to woo Borna indigents for their votes in the 2023 general elections. Unfortunately, the convoy of the former vice president was allegedly attacked by suspected thugs on their way to the palace of the Shehu of Borno. According to Dino Malai, who is one of the spokespersons of the Atiku presidential campaign, over 70 persons sustained various degrees of injuries and many vehicles damaged. He alleged that the assailants are supporters of the All Progressives Congress, trying to prevent opposition parties' campaign from happening. However, both the Borno State government, the APC, and the State Police Command have denied any attack on Atiku's convoy. And this contradicts the statement from the Atiku Media Office, which says the convoy was actually attacked. Still talking politics uh, in the Northeast, aggrieved governors of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, popularly called the G5, and uh, led by Governor of River State, Inyasa Wike, were in Bauchi State on a courtesy call, reportedly to convince Governor Bala Mohammed to join their campaign against the presidential candidate of their party, Atiku Abubakar. Recall that the Bauchi governor had, in a letter to the national chairman of the PDP, Senator Eochi Ayu accused Atiku Abubakar of sidelining him following the outcome of the party's presidential primaries and also working against his second term governorship bid in the state. Have a look at this. Like I said before, our main motive of coming here is to give uh, solidarity to our brother, the governor of Bauchi State, Senator Bala Mohammed, the Kauran Bauchi, and all who have discussed is to see how, by the grace of God, being a gift to the people of Bauchi, he will win his election come 2023. So all our discussion now to center about his election. And we're out to give him all the necessary support as our friend, as our brother in the same political family. It is no longer a secret that I wrote a letter to the party on my position in Bauchi. Uh, what I have found out to be working against me as a leader and as, as a second a first term governor going for my second term and I wrote it with all honesty and sincerity and with a deep sense of fidelity and that is why the party invited me to go and discuss with the plug bearer of the PDP, our leader, Elijah Chiku Abubakar and we discussed extensively and I have gotten some explanations because the letter I wrote was not only written by me it was written by the PDP family in Bauchi and the government of Bauchi. And that is why I was there and we discussed extensively. As for the G5 governors, I always joke with them that I am a G1, but I am inexorably connected with them. We have always been together and you know it. Uh, governor Wike, Governor Autumn, Governor, governor Fezwa, and of course Ogwanyi, they have been here several times and I have gone to them several times. And I think this is some of the takeaways I have as a governor, having fr friends for life. So I'm everywhere, but of course, it doesn't mean that I'm nowhere. Thank you very much. That we are here for reconciliation. We have never closed the door for reconciliation. All we are saying for equity, fairness, and uh, justice. That's not, in fact, that is the hallmark of what PDP stands for, for equity, fairness, and what? Justice. We, are here. we have never closed door. We will not close door. All we are saying, look, let the right thing be done. If the right thing is done, you will see how the whole place will be, uh, the whole country will know that the election is over. This is the bedrock of the party. This G5 you are seeing. 
we are the bedrock of the party. So we will not close the door for reconciliation. We are open for reconciliation any day, any okay. time. Thank you. And um, I want to say that that was well, not what I meant uh, when I was captured saying that. But all the same, I know that it will amount to logical fallacy um, if people have taken it the way I did. But um, I want to say to those who are offended by my remarks. Yes, the G5 governors in Bauchi with uh, Bala Mohammed. Uh, in retrospect, Atiku had on Tuesday met with Mr. Bala Mohammed in Abuja to reconcile their differences. But when the Bauchi governor told his guests today that he's on the same page with them, he left many PDP supporters and pundits wondering where he actually belongs. Is it with the G5 or with Atiku? Elsewhere, the presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his campaign team were in Benue State to flag off their campaign. <laughs> Mr. Obi made the announcement via his verified Twitter handle. And uh, pictures from the event showed the presidential candidate alongside his wife, Margaret, his running mate, Yusuf Detti Baba Ahmed, among other ranking members of the Labour Party. Viewers, welcome to the program. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV. And as usual, I am your anchor, Hamza Idris. Tonight on the program, we are joined by Dr. Abu Bakar Kari. He is an associate professor of political sociology at the University of Abuja. We are also joined by the deputy national youth leader of the People's Democratic Party, Tim Osadolo. Together, we'll be looking at the emerging issues in the PDP as well as other happenings in the political space. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you, Thank you for Hamza, for having Yes, me. today I appeared, you know, heavily pregnant with many political stories. And uh, maybe I should start with you, the youth leader. How true is it that your campaign train was attacked in Borno? Well, uh, it's as true as true can be. Facts don't lie. Don't, uh, facts remain the facts. Pictures don't lie. Videos don't lie. Even in the age where things seem to be doctored, uh, witnesses are there. People are seen in the hospital. What happened today in, in Bono is a, is a referendum on the, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and his party, and a referendum on the integrity of the governor, who is the chief secretary of of Bono State who before today people have perceived to be a refined gentleman. But I never knew that political affiliations and colorations could be cloud his better sense of judgment. No, why, why, why are you taking the blame to the, to the governor? Is it now, he's uh, the, the chief security officer of the state. It's not enough to take all the positive accolades when things happen uh, positively. When things go wrong, he should also be man enough to uh, let the box stop on his table. Today, what happened today was a state-managed incident. No person could have come out to attack a presidential campaign co it's a convoy if it's not having the backing of the states. Uh, Dr. Kari, I want, you to, I want you to come in here because I can see 
that the youth leader is actually taking the blame to uh, the APC ruling government in, in Borno? Well, I, I think uh, it's a developing story. Uh, we have heard from the alleged victims and the alleged assailants and uh, from the police. Uh, for me, I think it is only in the coming days that uh, what actually transpired will be very, very clear. So at this point, I think it is premature really to uh, begin to apportion blame uh, or to even accept the story. But the major thing is that if it indeed happened, then it is unfortunate. Yeah. Because so far, uh, electioneering in the build of the 2023 election has been relatively peaceful. Mm. And we thought it would remain peaceful. Mm. And in spite of the Boko Haram problem, I think for a very long time, Borno State has uh, actually remained quite peaceful, uh, particularly in terms of uh, electioneering. Mm. I think since the days uh, 2007, yeah. uh, when there was a serious tussle, uh, yeah. when the former governor Ali Modishiru was going, yeah. uh, thereafter the school, I mean the, the state has remained uh, relatively Very peaceful. peaceful. Yeah. As so as I know, yes. So I know the two parties will continue to. to, to to tread blame, I wouldn't want to be joined to it. Yeah. I would rather be absolutely sure about what happened. Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Timothy, the, the figures we got, around uh, 74 people hospitalized over 100 vehicles. How did you arrive at that? Well, uh, uh, I want to use one of the words that the prophecy used, though he tried to be here and there. He's a gentleman. He doesn't want to take things to be taken side. He's not a politician. He's not a politician too. <laughs> yes. So he, he, you cannot uh, fault his position. But I want to, I want to borrow a word from him. It's a developing story. Yes. Good. But what I take from that developing story is that the figures and the casualties may even still be more. It is that, those that we were able to ascertain mm. as at this minute that have been declared. Mm. Because you needed to be there. It was the grace of God that saw it through that lives have not been lost. Yes. If those at the hospital now, nobody can see what will happen. Mm. It's only God that gives and protects lives. Yes. So we can only have those in the hospital bed in our thoughts and in our prayers and hope that they get home back safely. But the truth is that it is unnecessarily what happened today. Mm. What happened to a, We have signed peace accord for these elections. We have said as gentlemen, let's have a refined a democratic process. Mm. Now, if we have th this kind of thing happening in one state, don't forget, sir, today it's Bonu, maybe uh, the APC has claims, majority, yeah. has claims to majority, but the, we have not taken that, major that claim to the ballots. Mm. We will take that claim to the ballots come February and March next year. Anyway, they have been winning for a long time. Yes, that is, uh, that, is, that is why they are not scared now. They have not had a candidate so powerful that's why, it's like, process is 270 dates. It has been a free ride for them. But now people are, are awake, not necessarily because the state government may, or the local politicians are not doing well, but because the face of the government that they see, as represented by the presidency, mm. affects the everyday lives of the common man. Yeah. And they feel the brunt and the weight, and they know that these things can be done differently. Mm. And they are seeing a candidate that can actually do things differently, and that can actually unify everyone across board. Yeah. So, it is getting to them, and, it, and they are becoming jittery. It's a panic mode that they, set, that they, were, they were triggered into, that triggered this uh, attack today. But let me tell you the danger of what they have done. They have forgotten that Bonu is just one state out of 30 states of the Republic, including the FCT. Mm. Now, what, what happens when you come to a state like Edo, that is PDP, or you go to a state like a Rivers or a Delta, or even Abuja here, that mm. is PDP? Yeah. Are you not saying their candidates will not be safe? They should be safe. Uh, doctor, uh, so and I want you to come should, in here we, we because... Must condemn uh, this kind of attack. Yeah, some people have started making comparison with what happened to the same PDP rally in Kaduna a few weeks ago when they were actually attacked. Same and uh, people are started complaining that is this the trend? Is this how campaigns uh, will continue when people go to a state after taking clearance from police operatives and other security agencies, then you suddenly see uh, talks taking over. 
Yeah, I think the optics are actually not good. Uh, I don't like uh, a trend mm. uh, or negative uh, episodes taking some kind of uh, pattern. Uh, this pattern does not bore well uh, for the 2023 uh, election generally. Mm. Uh, we thought and I really still believe that to a substantial extent uh, we have been able to address the problem of violence in electioneering. Mm. Because attacking convoys, attacking uh, rallies and campaign uh, uh, events, for me, will never do anything apart from uh, creating problems for the assailant themselves, yeah. whoever they are. Mm. So the most important thing is for all the stakeholders uh, as Mr. Timothy alluded to, to remember that they freely enter into a pact, into a, uh, a pact of peace, yeah. that uh, they will conduct themselves uh, very well. But it is also a big challenge for security agents to try to arrange the situation, mm. uh, which I believe they can, yeah. particularly given the fact that the thing has started taking a, a pattern. Yeah. Uh, they should make adequate uh, preparation, adequate uh, deployment to guarantee the safety of all participants uh, in election campaigns and rallies. And probably also make examples by uh, successfully processing all those arrested trying to disrupt uh, the peaceful uh, electoral process. It is very, very important. This thing must be nipped in the bot and very soon, to, I mean, uh, yeah. immediately too. Yes, you see, you are talking about role of uh, security agencies. I was shocked when I saw uh, different statements today. One from the Atiku office confirming that they were attacked. Another one from uh, the chairman of uh, Borno State, uh, APC chairman, uh, Bukhar Dalori, saying nothing happened. And another statement from the police being economical with actually the facts, admitting that uh, some talks, you know, pelted uh, the convoy, that one person was arrested, but at the same time saying there was no actually serious ambush on the convoy of uh, Atiku Abubakar. So what role and how do you think security agencies will detach themselves and be truthful when it comes to calling a spade a spade? Well, issuing contradictory statements uh, is, 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 is actually very, very bad for the police. Uh, the police must be neutral and they must seem to be neutral at all times. And they should always try to get their facts very, very well before they issue out uh, statements. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will run the risk of either not being taken seriously or being seen to have taken sides with uh, one of the parties uh, to the dispute. But I also want to remind you that interestingly, before this incident, mm. uh, some few weeks ago, uh, uh, I think I had it in one of the uh, house of services uh, of the international uh, radio stations, the chairman of PDP Bornostad and the governorship candidate came to Abuja and addressed a press conference mm. and alleged that uh, their lives were in danger. Hmm. So, and then this incident happened. Yes. So, the, the, so <laughs> there can be a, a lot a, of uh, two name possibilities and all that. Yes, yes. two yes. possibilities. Hmm. Either truly uh, PDP stalwarts are not safe in Borno State, hmm. or that uh, PDP are creating a scenario of not being safe uh, in Borno State. But whatever the truth is, I think it should quickly be nipped in the bud. All we need uh, is a peaceful, peaceful political space. Yes, peaceful a peaceful space, political yeah. space mm. where uh, members of every political party will freely come out and politic mm. and campaign, where uh, electioneering will take place without let and hindrance, without any fear of mm. attack. Yeah. Of whatever kind. Thank you very much. And uh, youth leader, you see, the spokesman of Borno Governor, we, we called him and he said, even if something happened, it was actually state managed by you people because you know 
Borno, as far as election is concerned, is APC. The truth is that you will not expect a man whose remote control is in, the pocket, in, my, in another man's pocket to say the truth. He is an agent, or an appointee of the Borno state government, which has stage managed this whole exercise. So you will not expect an appointee of Borno state government to come and point, point fingers at his principal. If you even look at the vice presidential candidate of the APC, who happens to come from Borno, and the utterances he has been making in the times past period to now, you will know that what happened in Bonu is not an happenstance. It is something that was well orchestrated. And it is something that is quite unfortunate that the Nigerian police force that is being reformed currently since the time of uh, uh, IG uh, Arase mm. to this current IG now is still having some elements, uh, some officers that cannot look at Naira and say the truth, or cannot look at some tendencies and say the truth. They said they arrested one suspect. The one suspect he arrested, was it, did he see the suspect in a mosque praying or in a church praying? Was he not seen at a, at a, at a scene, uh, 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 trying to co uh, commit crime scene, uh, co yeah. uh, the crime scene? Then let, uh, let them tell Nigerians what the man has, uh, information he has provided since the point he was arrested till now. Let this issue, this issue should not be swept under the carpet. Okay. I want all the international organizations under the carpet, and all civil society organizations in this country subscribe? to... Uh, oh, do you know why it is important for this issue yeah. not to be swept under the carpet? Like a uh, prof uh, so, uh, brilliantly uh, put it together, it is taking a pattern. Mm. And that is where I was coming to before. Yesterday it was Kaduna. An APC stronghold. Mm. Today it is Bonu. Even the Labour Party presidential candidate um, mm. uh, in October, he alleged that his members were attacked in Lagos. The, it, is not, it is not. It's not a good thing. Even if the Labour candidates don't have enough uh, class, uh, let, let, let's, let's, uh, he's a candidate. He's a candidate. Even if it's for the for the for the optics, allow his people to say something. Allow, it is freedom. It is democracy. Even if one man says, "I am running for president," on on I, or, uh, do our law is not allowed for independent candidates. Even if he's going to vote for himself, allow him to campaign for himself. This country is a free nation. We are all free bonds. There's no law that says if uh, 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 um, uh, ADP or YPP wins one state, that uh, ZPP or Z Zion Party cannot come and campaign in that state. It's a free state. And more so, let me tell you, dynamics are changing, sir. Mm. Dynamics are changing, and times are changing. Nigerians of 1999 are not the Nigerians of 2022. There are more youths that have registered to vote. There are more Nigerians that are woken up to know that this country, their votes can count, and their votes should count. Okay, I want to ask you this question. Do you agree that this Togri is now transcending youths and even some governors are actually putting their shoes to the, play this role. The, this APC government from the states you have seen, Lagos, Kaduna, Bornu, we should call the APC governors and their president to a round table again and let them assure Nigerians that all lives matter. But APD governors process. are also not exempted. Look at what happened in, 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 in Rivers where Wike is, is the governor. Mm. You know, he, he removed, I, I think he, re, he revoked the plot of land given to, uh, you know, one of his aides who actually tilted towards Atiku. Is this not Togri? No. At you, the highest the, order? There are two scenarios here. Okay. One is direct attack on party members, physical attacks. On party members, but psychological attack is worse. No, you also listen. The, the issue of Governor of Wiki mm. is bad on its own, but you cannot compare rotting mangoes and a rotting meat. Mangoes a fruit, meat is an animal. They are two different things. The truth is this: Governor Wiki's issue is something we will discuss when, when when it comes to that. Yeah. The issue we are discussing now, as at this moment. Is well, I'm attack? trying to show that it's actually taking different patterns no, as postulated no, by, no by, by Dr. No other party has gone to reverse. A bit YPP, be it AMPP, be it any party has gone to reverse. And they were uh, stabbed or they were pelted or shot at as it was done in Kaduna okay, okay. or on Bono today. Dr. Kari, what is your take on this? Because uh, we keep blaming the young people, calling them talks and all that. But you can see governors are directly using instrument of state to coerce violence. opponents, yeah, and then to induce violence. For instance, in Rivers, I'm still citing an example, the governor recently recruited over 200,000 youths or people, and they are calling them now, is it polling unit agent? Is it not really recruitment of talks in disguise? 
Well, the truth is uh, our governors, particularly in this Fourth Republic, we have said it repeatedly, they are the major threat of democracy in Nigeria. Uh, they have done everything possible to uh, close down the political space. Mm. They have amassed so much power. They decide things. They undo uh, democratic pillars. In fact, they insist, okay, that they have to decide everything for the people. And I'm talking about governors of all the parties. All the parties. All yeah. the parties. So say, and this thing started PDP, APC, because they all are of them. In fact, they appear to constitute some kind of court. And for me, they are uh, like uh, what in sociology we call a subculture. A subculture okay. is part of mainstream society, but which has its own uh, characteristics, uh, ways of doing things, and so on and so forth. Yeah. The governors do not brook opposition. They are highly undemocratic. They do so many things, including actually uh, either actively uh, recruiting these stocks or uh, using proxies and surrogates mm. uh, to do so. Uh, and this is very, very bad. Attempts have been made in the past to try to neutralize uh, their own nuisance because it is really a nuisance. Mm. But so far, uh, we have not succeeded. Yes, Obasanjo we... tried it. Yeah. Several attempts at constitutional uh, amendments were thwarted by the same governors. Yeah. And these are the same governors who always want to dictate to the rest of the country, including the, the rest president of Nigeria, in many instances. Including the president. Yeah. They have always blackmailed the president. They have uh, almost always encycled the villa and tried to uh, get their own will done. So it's a very, very serious problem. Yes. There can be no talks, mm. as far as I'm concerned, if governors don't want talks. Okay, what is, what is what is the way forward, Prof? What do the way the forward? The way forward is mm. always to play the game by the rule. Democracy is a culture. Democracy, I mean, uh, is an entirely uh, distinct way of life. Mm. It has its own rules. It has its own uh, regulations. It has its own do's and do's. There are certain expectations. Yeah. All political players, mm. uh, politicians. Uh, even members of the public, mm. there is a way they are supposed to approach politics. Yeah. So for God's sake, let us play politics the way it is supposed to be played. Let us not uh, subvert uh, democratic norms and values. That's the way forward. Okay, youth leader, are you happy with the way actually the democratic space is being squeezed? Because as I said earlier, the governors are using different methods, irrespective of political parties. For instance, even redirecting where opposition should campaign, putting heavy levies for opposition to, you know, put on their uh, banners, you know, campaign posters and all that. And also asking state media not to take adverts from opposition parties across both parties. And I'm not just making reference to PDP or APC, all the political parties. It is something that's wrong. It's something that is... Uh should be condemned mm. because democracy, like Prof said, is a culture and it's something that uh, we should allow to grow. Since 1999 that we started this uh, 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 second experiment or the fourth experiment of our democratic, mm. democratic process, I think by now, if things were not being, uh, if this process was not being choked or tried to be uh, molded in the likeness of some person's ego, this process or this culture would have been further entrenched than now. There's no harm in anybody com campaigning. Mm. There's no harm. It's like going to the market to say, I have XYZ items to sell. You know, the other one says, I have ABC items to sell. It is the one that is most attractive that the voters or the buyer will say, I am interested in this for these reasons. Mm. This one serves my interest more for this other reason. But the system whereby you now have states coming out to muzzle the process, the, the, the choices of, of their populace mm. through uh, the, the instrumentality of state organs and structures. It is 
It is a threat to our democracy. It's a threat to the Constitution of the Federal Republic on which they have also taken oath to defend. Because the, the, the democracy we enjoy today draws its strength from the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yeah. Any attempt to, to, to uh, uh, muzzle down the growth of democracy, you are fighting that constitution. And by extension, you are also, also fighting the oath of office you took. Mm. So I don't think, okay, now, most times, than, more often times than, uh, than, than where, uh, is expected, when they, after they have done all of this, the will of the people will prevail. Will prevail. Mm. Thank God for INEC that is now getting better and better over every election cycle. Yeah. We were in Oshun the last time. The, the PDP family was denied access to all of the major feats, just the way they did in Kaduna the other day. But when the vote came in, it came in in big numbers yeah. and swept away the, uh, the APC like a hurricane. Which is a big message. Which, now, you, you are deputy national leader. Yes, leader. Yes. What are you doing you know, to actually sensitize youth? Because they are the instrument being used now, by what we the do, powers that What do. we are trying to do, earlier this year, when the registration uh, was still low, mm. the party, through uh, uh, the leadership of Dr. Yocha Ayu, approved money. We went uh, around f the states, the zones, and some LGs to sensitize the youth of this country. Irrespective of political Irrespective parties. of political rallies. Even in Abuja here, mm. I'm sure some of your uh, uh, colleagues in the, in the media, media will tell you, we were at market areas, market points, telling people, this is not a PDP affair. It's the affair of all Nigerians. Mm. Go and get your PVC. Your PVC is the only way don't wait for any soldier. No soldier man is coming to, to do any coup. The only, the only way to change government to the one you want is when you have your PVC. PVC, yeah. Yes. I will stop you here. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We will take a short break now. And uh, when we return, the conversation continues. Don't go away. Nigerians, elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime, and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement, terrorism, fake news, hate speech, religious bigotry, and any act that tends to divide us as a nation. Watch out for strange gatherings and suspicious movements. Restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbors. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. They resort to kidnapping, killings for rituals, and other heinous crimes. Avoid wrong use of the social media. Before you broadcast that false message, think twice. Ask whether it will promote peace or violence. For safety at home, still be security conscious. Educate your household on safety tips. Report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you. Be a good citizen. Be patriotic. To pass security information, please call 0813-222-2105-0915-339-1309-0908-837-3514 or send a mail to dsspr at dss.gov.ng. This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS.
Welcome back. If you are just joining us, Daily Politics on Trust TV. Remember, you can follow the conversation on our various social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. We are discussing Togri. Court cases taking center stage ahead of 2023 election, which is really bad. And uh, we have in the studio Timothy Osadolo. He's the deputy national youth leader of the People's Democratic Party. We also have Dr. Abu Bakar Kari. He's an associate professor of political sociology from the University of Abuja. Welcome back. Yes, um, uh, Doctor, today we saw uh, the G5 of the People's Democratic Party in Bauchi, or troubleshooting. Uh, what is your take? It's like the problems in the PDP is snowballing by the hour. Are you really worried? Well, I think uh, it, it, it's, <laughs> it is quite puzzling. Uh, but at the same time, for me, uh, it is not unexpected, really. It was not even shocking. Uh, or surprising because uh, from their body language, from their pronouncements, uh, and maybe antics, uh, okay, sorry to say, the wicked group are only poised for one thing, and that is escalation. Okay. Uh, yes. Escalation of the crisis. Yes, escalation of the crisis because uh, they are in no way ready for now uh, for reconciliation, even though. Uh, from one side of their mouth, uh, that's what I've been saying. Uh, and I say so because if you really do a careful analysis of their pronouncements, uh, they have succeeded in laying down some conditions. And these conditions are almost impossible okay. for Atiku Awakar to accept, uh, at least for now. And they are sticking to that position and they are insisting that. Uh, the other person should uh, capitalize. Mm. And I think in reconciliation, there should be a little bit of shifting of ground. Yeah. Uh, you don't reconcile at gunpoint, because that is exactly what these people uh, mm. are doing. And some of them have actually crossed the Rubicon. They have made statements that uh, point uh, toward the fact, I mean, uh, towards the possibility of irreversibility of their own position. Wow. The Benue state governor, for instance, mm. uh, he made an unfortunate statement uh, that he will never vote for somebody from a particular ethnic group, the ethnic group yeah. of the taking, presidential taking candidates. Taking the, the, the negative conversation to another level. Yes, and even the Oyo state governor actually uh, allegedly was part of the endorsement of the candidate of the opposition party mm. uh, is something that has not been officially denied. Mm. So uh, some of these people, uh, for me, what they are doing, and I have maintained that position, is tantamount to zero-sum politics. Wow, zero-sum. Yeah, in zero-sum, as we say in the days uh, of student uh, unionism, there are two options. Okay. It is either we win or they lose. Which is actually no option. No option. Yes, yeah. So that is what is playing out. But the most puzzling thing is how they uh, attempted to uh, uh, involve my own governor in the entire problem. Bochi, <laughs> yes. Let me bring yeah, in the yeah, yeah. youth so, leader here. Are, so, are you people worried so with what this, this, these governors are doing? You can see now after flying all through the south, they have now started encroaching into the north. They are not encroaching into the north. Okay. You see, a drowning man clusters at anything that he thinks. Who is the drowning man here now? We all know the drowning man. We all know the man that lost elections that has not been able to get over it. So the truth is this. Is, is that Wiki? If you say it's Wiki, it is. But I will tell you for free, mm. Governor Wiki, to me, is not behaving like a true party man. Now he, he preaches peace. Mm with gun in his own daggers in his hands. It doesn't, it doesn't as, follow. As Prof. As Prof has said. said. Yeah. The truth is that there are different ways people uh, react to issues. He may just be having, um, what do I call it now, 
in the military or say post traumatic stress disorder or something. It's only be post election stress, uh, loss, uh, whatever. You mean he is yet to recover from the shock? He is yet to recover from the shock, even when he tries to smile and say that one is past. But you see the way he says, uh, we, we don't have a candidate now. First election uh, for, stress for, disorder. Uh, now uh, they say this, they give orders what is belongs to them. Mm. Who, who is the orders? Who constitutes you to become this and that within mm. the party? Self entitlement. It is that unnecessary self entitlement mentality is what has gotten them to where they are today. The truth is that Governor Bala Mohammed, a very senior member of this party, mm. a very respected member of this party, even from the what, what he said this evening yeah. with his mouth, he said. In good conscience and faith, I wrote to the leadership of the party, mm. stating how I feel or what I feel or perceive or know to be working against my second time interest. Mm. And the party leadership responded and said, meet with the candidates after meeting with the party leadership, which he has done. And they spoke extensively and these issues have been resolved. He said, they said they are G5, I'm G1. But you, you can see, now, I think he, he now, appears to be very now, corny. No, in, it's, in not, it's not being corny. He spoke in English. It is those that don't. But want we to... know English very well. Very Look at well. what he said. He, he sat on the fence, honestly. So he was saying that I am he part could, and he, he I could... align of, of sort. No, he said they are part of me. We call with the, Yes, if as I'm here today, I have friends on the other side of the divide politically. Mm. I can relate to them. I can go to their functions. But it doesn't mean when we come to, to issues of uh, 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 principles, mm. on grounds of principle. Does, uh, would, dis would, would disagree. And that is what he was telling them subtly. subtly. You are my friends, you are my colleagues, but I belong to somewhere. But why did he host them after, you know, <laughs> visiting <laughs> Atiku the, last the, night? The, he, there's no way on earth he could have said, don't come to my, to my, to my states. There are still governors under the umbrella of the PDP. Even if they were not even governors under the PDP, they are colleague governors. Yeah, if I may come in, I yes, think... Yes, yes, uh, yes, doctor. <laughs> yes, you can come I, in. Are they trying to rock the boot completely? They well, are I trying, think, but they will not succeed. No, I, okay, let, let's, let, let's uh, first understand uh, Balao's okay. predicament. Mm. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Bochy State. I understand the basis of his writing to the party. Uh, basically, Bala and the PDP leadership in Bochy, they are worried that Atiku Abakar is patronizing they are political enemies in court, mm. and basically two persons. The first one is uh, our former governor, Amadou Ademu Moazu. Yeah, he may, uh, they mentioned his name. Yes, uh, Amadou Ademu Moazu and Bala Mohammed have never been together. As a matter of fact, in 2007, uh, Bala Mohammed defeated um, Ademu Moazu, an incumbent governor then. Yes, to come it, to the Senate. Yes, uh, to come to the Senate. and. They have never been together, but particularly Yakubu Dogara. Yeah, Yakubu Dogara, who, is, who has a different party now. Yes, who has been in and out of uh, PDP, and who, in all sincerity, nobody is certain where he actually belongs. Uh, for now, mm. was one of the major people who uh, brought Abala Mohammed to power. Mm. Uh, he he has to be credited. Uh, he led the anti M. A. Bakar group. And but the, they are now fierce enemies of some. Yes, mm. and they parted ways acrimoniously, very, very acrimoniously. But and will this G5 save uh, Bala Mohammed from the jugular of these fellows you mentioned? No, no, no. Actually, uh, G5, as far as I'm concerned, has no influence in Bochi politics, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the dynamics are completely different. Meaning he Rather, had to threat softly? The Bala had to cry out because I must be frank, he's facing a formidable opponent. Okay. He's, yeah. He's Which opponent, we will definitely discuss. Yes. In, uh, in, in, in his opponent from the ruling party at the center is very, very strong. Uh, he has a world oil machinery and he appears to enjoy the support of a section of the elite. So that is a no problem for Bala. Yeah. Uh, not to talk of uh, his own party patronizing his political enemies. So mm. he has to cry out. Very As good. for the reason why Wiki and Ko came to Bochi, I, th I think I've given the answer. It's just escalation. It's just to escalate the problem. To escalate the problem. Yes. And, to yeah. give, and maybe to rock the boot. Yes. And to give the semblance that uh, they are still around. Yeah. And uh, they are still uh, sticking by their words. Yes. And they're still 
the party has to succumb to their uh, demands. Yes. Whether they will succeed or not is a different matter. Yes, youth leader. It's like you people are facing so many problems because be beside the internal wrangling, you are also facing different court cases. I know that uh, in Zamfara now, your governorship candidate has been sacked by court, and you also have similar issue in Ogun, where you have a, a debut. The same thing with APC, you know, they, they have problem in Adamawa, they have problem in, in Taraba. What is your take on this? Well, the truth is Briefly, yeah. The court cases are part of the democratic processes. Okay. Court processes are part of the democratic processes. It's better you go to court and, and sort out and sort out your differences than going to carry a resort to safe help. Mm. But again, true, the judicial system must also know that there are some issues that are not justiciable. Which is uh, which I. Uh, but you know, courts are not for the Christmas. When you ask, they give you. Yes. If you approach them, they attend to you. Yes, but there are issues that are not justiciable. The internal workers of a political party, not all of them are justiciable. But that being said, again, I commend those that have gone to court, but I also frown at those, at the same time, frown at those that have not exhausted the internal mechanisms of their party at dispute resolutions. Thank you. I will go to a doctor to give me his take on this. Is it lack of internal democracy? And what is the import of this to our party politics? Going to court, you know, sacking candidates and all that. In yeah, partly minute, so. But I think uh, 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 there's a need for a premise. Uh, sometime in 2008 or nine, we carried out a study and our conclusion was that Nigeria's democracy, unfortunately, has become a court-dependent democracy. Oh, my God. Court-dependent yes. democracy. Yes. That's Which is not the ideal, right? Yes. That to a very large extent, uh, electoral outcomes in, in many, if not most, uh, instances, as at that time, were decided not necessarily at the ballot, mm, but, but by the court. court. And, and what is the implication? And the implication... <laughs> No, we really have to look at the cost first. And in as much as we blame the judiciary, we also have to blame the political process. Mm. And the internal party democracy that you mentioned is one of them. Oh. Because politicians of all who's in Christ do not usually play by the rule. The political parties has been hijacked by a few privileged individuals who always insist that their own uh, wishes must prevail. So. Free, fair, and transparent primaries are a scarce, have been a scarce commodity. Thank Even you very much, Doctor. This is a very interesting area, but we have run out of time and we have oh. to stop here. But we <laughs> hope to bring you back to discuss this issue specifically. Thank you very much for your informed uh, perspective, uh, Dr. Abu Bakar Kari of the uh, you know, University of Abuja. It's Timothy, a pleasure. The youth leader of PDP, we thank you very much for your informed perspective. Thank you for having me here. Yes, viewers, that's a wrap on today's program. Thank you for watching, and do join us again. I'm Hamza Idris.